So thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, thank you all for coming. Jamina, that frock, look at this blanket. <laughs> it, oh, it's fabulous. <sighs> um, thank you for all the colors. I feel like you're like paying homage to my space. Um, and my mom's here. She's really blurry in the corner. I don't know what's happening, but hopefully you can just hear and see. Just don't touch anything, mommy. Um, uh, and some new faces. So it's nice to see y'all. And Jason's doing forensics in the center. He's doing, <laughs> I really don't know. Um, but I'm excited to bring you all in my space. I've spent a lot of time here this summer. I think the quarantine and personal losses in my life just kind of kicked in needing to make stuff. Um, oh, host has spotlighted your video. Oh, okay. Sorry, now it's just me. And I'm back, all right. Just for a second, it was only me in my face. Um, so I started making a lot of new work because it was kind of compulsive and I felt the need to just create as a way to cope. So I actually have a lot of new stuff to share. So I'm excited about that. And I had a chance to really deep clean this, this clean, my studio. So I'm also excited to kind of share my special space. Um, and the altar that I have behind me to my grandmother that I will show you all in a little bit. Um, because it really had me thinking about my work and the idea of intergenerational creativity, which is something I never thought of, but it makes so much sense. Um, yeah, so I thought I would do a little studio tour, um, if that's something of interest. Um, but I also, so this is a soup kitchen, and in lieu of food, I have a ton of chips and snacks and things. Did anyone bring their snacks? No. Fit. Oh, okay. A Seagram's? Beer? Oh, look, he's snacking. Yes, snack on. <laughs> um, so I brought a bunch of snacks because they're my favorite food. I like to have a bunch of little stuff to pick on. I like to have three drinks when I can. I got a whole bunch kind of going on here. Um, and it's just, I was thinking about my birthday and goodie bags and like just simple fun stuff. So I was going to have us all share about our favorite snack, which I think we still can, even if you don't have the snack. Um, okay. What else did I want to say? Hmm. How's everybody doing? Differently. And if you want people to just do this now, then go ahead, right? You are welcome to to make it your own. I didn't hear the first part of what you said. <laughs> if you want, if you want everybody to like just share it now, or if you want to do it, um, if you want Oh, no, no. I just was explaining some of my ideas. No, nobody has to share anything now. Let's ease in to this. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I changed again. Okay. No, but I was just asking how everybody's day was. Okay, thumbs, nice. Okay, a medium thumb. Jamina, two thumbs. Okay, nice job, Jason. I know you're not much of a thumb person. <laughs> I, I think my mom maybe had a typo because she definitely said she has mini turtles. <laughs> oh my God, just put yourself back on mute. <laughs> um, <laughs> and <laughs> okay, no, really, put yourself back on mute. Why? Okay, okay. <laughs> this is all new to me. Hi, Jason. Hi, Kyle. Hi, Monica. Goodbye. <laughs> I'll put myself on mute right now. Okay, I'm muting myself. Bye bye. Okay, <laughs> that's my mom. <laughs> That's where I get it. I mean, I'm not too different than that exact thing that just happened, especially the mini turtles. 
Um, but yeah, I'm just excited to chill and sit down <laughs> and be able to just eat and hang out. And yeah, I'm going to do a little tour of my studio and feel free to ask any questions. Um, <laughs> cute. I can't. I have many turtles. I don't understand. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I looked at the chat again and it distracted me. Um, okay. Are you all up for a little tour of my studio space? I'm going to do it more like a show and tell. I'm not going to really talk about like the work and its meaning and I'm just going to show and tell you um, what I got. Let's see if this works. Okay. Oh, okay. So I taught a class today that was hybrid, meaning I was in class with three students and the rest of them, we had to zoom into the classroom. It's like, it actually went pretty well, but it's a pretty weird thing. I feel like I'm doing it all over again. That's okay. <laughs> okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let me move it a little bit. Sorry. Okay, can y'all hear me? Yes. Okay. I am, I'm going to start at the new stuff. Let me, can you guys see? It's hard for me to tell. Yeah. All right. Let me give it a go. I'll come back around to that. Um, these are some works that I made over the summer. Uh, when I was stuck in Florida, I went to Florida to care for my grandmother and then the pandemic hit and I was there for two months. Uh, so I made do with what I had. And these were some bed razors that uh, my uncle Kendo made for my grandfather and they were in the garage. And they're like really sweet, like little almost canvas size things. This is a really old piece. Uh, and I just got a, I thought a phone case that would fit, but it didn't. So I put it in here. We'll see what happens. Um, shout out to me if I am at like a weird angle and you're seeing weirdness. Uh, these are some of the new works that I made. And what was interesting is that I was making them all separately and really getting this sense of uh, not really accomplishing anything or not really making anything because I started working on paper and really quite small. Um, but then I realized they just all needed to be together um, and that I had quite a bit of work. They just needed to kind of be a community together and, and um, I'm really excited about these pieces. And if anybody works on paper, I could use advice. Um, this is a new piece that got really overdone. But what I really am excited about is this plushy pink stuff here. Is like, I don't know, some insulator from the dollar store. And it's so beautiful. It's like the perfect 80s frame. I think we can all relate to that. This 2020. I recently found this old drawing of a friend of mine who actually was just walking down the street with a spider that made a web in his beard and was hanging there. True story. These are just some little treasures. This is from the Deitch Projects Art Parade a million years ago. I started really getting into these little marks and just the self-soothing quality. If you ever just want to chill, but you want to create, just making the same form over and over again um, creates the rhythm due to the repetition. So it's soothing. These are some of my new pieces. Thank you. Um, 
that's my friend Mika's mouth that she posed for. But I'm really into like these totems, kind of all of these pieces, this kind of gestalt making the whole. Please interrupt me if you're like, girl, we're bored. Okay. Mm -hmm. no. Okay. No, I mean, yes, please. Okay. This is for goodie bags. So if anybody wants, just give me your address and I'll send you um, some goodie bags. It's just a mix of stuff I have, but it's all, it's all fun stuff. Um, and I sanitized it and I'm going to sanitize it again. So trust and belief is clean. This is my favorite. It's all of my materials. It took a really long time to organize. Um, it's really nice to be able to share this space. I've been in here. I teach in here. I see my clients in here. I work in here. So I'm in here alone all the time. <laughs> um, well, with students or clients, so it's kind of nice to have some other people. This is a collection of fabric that I took from Florida. Um, there we go. That was my grandmother's. Also, tell me if you want me to direct this anywhere. That's just some old stuff. These are my clothes on the go, because I'm usually just wearing pajamas right up until I see someone. Look, Molly, there's your fan that you gave me, the car. And then this is my new office space. Um, it was actually really fun putting it together. These are some more new, newer works. Um, also again, kind of working with this totem or sacred kind of thing. And then this is my favorite piece. Woof. It's the best. There's so many times in life you just need to woof. Um, I suggested at work a good woof. Ah! All right. Ooh, this is a Lisa Wicca print. That's not my work. But this is where I work. This is where I see clients. They get to see the whole kind of back um, space of my studio, which is actually a really cool humanizing piece of me to share. Um, these are some curtains my grandmother made. One of the old pipe cleaner pieces. Um, yeah, but I've really been enjoying this space and making it and like nesting into it and coming up with like weird ways to store things like this little shelf of um, school stuff. Okay. And I got this blue light spray. I don't know if it really works. It's organic for your face when you're on the computer too long. <laughs> it's very nice. I highly recommend it. It's by Derme. So like when I start my day I, to like be in the office, I blue light spray. It makes you feel good. <laughs> I got the glasses too, because my eyes, right? Like it's the fatigue of all fatigues. Just like being on the computer all day long. I admire Kyle, animator, illustrator, anyone who does just does that all day. Godspeed to you. It's a lot on the face. Um, it's a little too bright over here. But so the show that I had at um, La Borrega, these are actually the pieces from that. I broke that tree down into a few different pieces. Um, and they're somewhat of like boulder forms. And then I found some hula hoops on the street and what looks like handlebars, but I'm not sure. Oh, guys. But it's really like, it's been very nesty in here, more so than usual, actually. Um, this is the collaboration with Max Emiliano Gignani. 
I think most of you have seen it. That's one of his confetti basketballs. Monica was there when I broke my finger playing basketball. <laughs> I felt actually like a badass. Um, I'm gonna come back to that. And this is a little rock shrine that I've been working on for a couple years. Um, I feel like it's doing some nice stuff. And then this amazing plushy stuff. It looks just like an 80s frame. Can you actually go back to that shrine one more time? Yeah, yeah. And hold it still because I would like yeah. to get focused. Oh yeah, I forgot. I'm really bad at being still. And this is really, um, I'm sorry if I'm shining really bright lights in your face, but this is my special place. It's definitely like that safe space. I'm gonna turn myself around. Hold on. <laughs> All right. There we go. Thank you for going around with me. It might have been really bumpy. <laughs> um, so I wanted to also just um, share this altar piece that I made and I was just gonna light some candles and have us all just have a chance to maybe consider an intention or someone that you're thinking about or someone that you lost, but not in a sad way. I kind of want to party a little bit, um, but just in a kind of loving way. Um, yeah, I, I was thinking a lot when I was at home in Florida about how much my work is like a direct connection to my grandmother's sewing and the things she would create and like making something out of nothing. And, that, and that's when I thought of the intergenerational creativity because she grew up with nothing um, in the mountains of Puerto Rico and raised most of her siblings. So she just did shit and she was gonna get it done. So everything she made in her home was the Puerto Rican way. Um, and it was a little, you know, off the beaten path, but that was her, it took me a really long time in life to realize that that was her therapy, like sewing curtains and um, making clothes or couch covers or chair covers, um, that that was her escape. Uh, and I don't know why I never really thought about how therapeutic that she had that. Um, but yeah, I got to really witness it being home for a while in Florida. Just all the funky things that she would make out of nothing. Um, but I think that deprivation will do that, right? And also open up your mind to be more creative because you're pushed to that limit to have to be. Um, and I think that that's happening this whole year. Um, being in a place where you're deprived of going out and doing the, you know, the regular day-to-day -day has also op opened up opportunities that we're engaging differently, um, that action is happening differently. Um, so I feel like when you're, there's some deprivation, you're kind of pushed to expanding how you can live and maybe even more so not distracted um, by things. So that makes sense. I've been thinking about that a lot recently. Um, 
and it's Hispanic Heritage Month. So I have um, some coloring pages. I have a WIPA coloring page I just made. So if anybody wants them, I will email them to you. Um, but it's also been something I've been steeped in with uh, teaching and actually thinking, I don't know of one well-known uh, Latino founder of art therapy. I can't think of one. I can't think of one art therapist at all. Um, so it was interesting to put that in perspective. Um, and just kind of who's being seen and how they're being seen. But beyond that, just celebrating the sweet stuff is what I've been kind of trying to do. So I'm just going to share this and then we could eat snacks and drink beverages. If y'all have beverages, Jason's still going to do his, test, his testing kit for forensics. Um, I don't know what you're investigating, but <laughs> um, yeah. And any questions or any requests, um, you know, please let me know. I'm happy to be here with everybody. I'm just going to put my computer on the ground and light these candles up. I have a lot of snacks. It's a crazy amount of snacks. What are you guys eating? Ah, good job. Well done. <gasps> Wait. I have, left, I have leftover yeah. from my s'mores journey. <laughs> Why are you trying to hijack things? <laughs> Why is my mom trying to do this? <laughs> we ran out of marshmallows, Melissa, so I kind of have to clean up the rest. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that makes sense. I love when there's a good excuse to clean, to clean up. <laughs> Um, she's out there trying to steal my thunder right there. <laughs> Hi. Tommy, come on. She said so, um, I also just wanted to share, I'm going to put them up on, uh, Etsy again, this, um, like holiday time, but my grandmother and I, I always called her mom my whole life. So it's weird to even say grandmother. And her name was Lydia. We were making these like notebook holders for a while. We sold some, but she made so many of them. And I would only realize that when I would go to Florida and there'd be like a stack. There was definitely a new stack. Um, notebook holder? I've never seen those before. This one's, I feel like I've had it for a long time and it's just mine. I should just take it. It's like a cute clutch, right? Um, but I'm so happy we did that together. Um, I called it Abuelitas Cositas. I really didn't do much. I maybe made one. I just gave her the fabric <laughs> um, and then put it online. Uh, and I'll share, um, and I like these, and then I'll share some of the other things because there's some cool stuff that she made in here too. Does anybody have any traditions in their family for how you kind of celebrate someone's life. Well, that was a bummer question. I'm sorry. <laughs> the rosary. No, I don't think that's a bummer question. Hi, it's Michelle. Um, I mean, I think that, I was thinking about this lately. I think that religion comes in handy during these, those kind of times, you know, when someone passes away, it sort of gives you a roadmap, you know, 
Mm -hmm. It's like, well, okay, this is what we do. And this roadmap is sort of uh, seeped in like, not, not just tradition, but like reasons, you know, there's like, there's sort of reasons behind why things are done the way they're done. You know, and so I feel like it's, it can be really supportive to have this like structure. It's like when you, when someone passes away, it's so hard to focus. So it's sort of like, okay, here's the thing. Here's what you do. It just, it sort of puts things back in place. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yes. You know, am I making like sense or am I That bad? makes so much sense. Cause yeah. I also feel like it's a, it's a way of coping, right? Your brain has mm -hmm. so many different ways of coping right but kind of tuning into what you can control and mm -hmm. maybe that is focusing on a making something or a religious act or right um, so I think it gives you that sense of holding um and it narrows things down maybe than all of the kind of intrusive thoughts that can come with loss um yes I think that made a lot of sense uh, I think that's how, I mean, when my grandmother passed, I immediately started painting a portrait of her. Mm -hmm. um, and it was painful, but it was like the only thing I could do. I mean, I don't, I, I'm a pretty, I try to stay very distracted <laughs> in a healthy way, I think. Um, but it's it's been interesting to be mindful of the way I'm coping with loss because I've never done it before it all just happened this year um so yeah it's it's a wild thing do you have this painting ah uh, i can send you all a pic i have a picture um it came out so good thanks mommy um hmm. it might be like not worth me going through this. Give me a moment. Um, I see the tops that mom made. Yeah, I'm going to show you. They're cute. I will say, if y'all want to see it, it's on my Instagram. I don't know where it is within it's the many images I he have here. Made it quickly. Um, so, but you can find it there. It was it was a really good place for me to channel all of my energy and all the different kinds of energy that comes with that. Um, yeah. So I'm just gonna share a few other things here. Um, yeah. And if you have any intentions for anyone, this might be a time to consider that, or for yourself. It doesn't have to be or someone else. I think I also just wanted a chance for her to be seen. She made so many cool things and didn't, I don't know, get that kind of opportunity for that. So this is, Jason Hoff gave me this fabric for my birthday and then she made it into this fine frock over here. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is my favorite shirt. Let me just get it in there, I hope. Uh, she meant for me to cut off that piece and decide what I wanted to do with the collar, but it was just way better to leave the piece. It's another. Oh, it's giving very, um, like, judge look. Another one. Then she made this real wild piece that I've yet to wear, and I'm not sure how, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna figure it out. Um, I'm gonna put my computer. Back. You could like, you could like wear it over a blouse, like something loose, and like wear it like almost like a corset. You know? Yes. Well, that's what it is. That's and a good but idea. I was thinking it'd be so itchy. That's a yeah, really yeah, good Yeah, yeah, that's idea. what I was thinking too. But if <laughs> you like wear like something, yeah, loose and it sort of cinches it in, it might look cool. Thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. I'm totally gonna do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. These are just um, 
some pillows that she made. That's actually some fabric that I made. But all the kind of, you know, special things that reminded me of her, the Golden Girls magnets. Thank you for that, Mommy. <laughs> That's her. You're welcome. <laughs> my beloved mom um yeah so I don't know it was I I feel like Michelle you kind of encapsulated what brought me to making this um it just I it was the only thing I could do it was like I had to put all these pieces together I think like my other work through the summer too um yeah so I think of it as like I don't know. It doesn't make me sad. It's, she had really wild stuff. Um, ooh, no. It's a scam call. No. No. Is it a scam? Sorry. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it felt, it felt kind of fun. So. So do you think you are going to just... Um kind of work on it and make it and change it over time and well her birthday was on September 9th so I'm thinking I'm gonna just keep it through September and okay. then put everything because everything's from different places in my home so I'll just put all the stuff back that's nice a little spot um yeah so I'm gonna just here. I kind of like your your studio a lot. There's just so many things. It's just crowded. It's like yeah. one thing about the other. It's just a real, um, you know, mix of things. <laughs> um, yeah, it is a ton of stuff, and I feel like I kind of pride myself in making it like organized tons uh -huh. of stuff. It's entertaining. It's entertaining. Right. Yeah. It's very entertaining. What do you do what do you do when you do show in public, right? You kinda like really start something, you let other people also go in and do something and like there's a lot of um I, I most of my pieces are interactive. Um, so yeah, I like the opportunity to share as a co-creator, kind of share in that transitional space that you go to when you're making something and be able to kind of have that, um, for the other, but also make art more approachable. And it's always fun to be able to touch something, uh, cause you're usually not allowed to. So, yeah. Um. Yeah, but it seems very yeah. studio and your work in the in the public space, you know. It seems like it also includes a lot of other people and other things and you know. Yes. Uh, totally. in private space, it's still not really something that you are afraid, you know, like you're very open of sharing things. Oh you yeah. You can see even you know, even if it's the, like the um the um, your grandma's um, things, but obviously that's not, that's not, not the public, <laughs> but uh, I can see how easy you are with like intermixing things with your art, right? Which I think is pretty fascinating. I think it, I, it needs a community. So, or it needs like a little village to hang out with. So, um, yeah. I mean, I think I also do, open house Brooklyn which I haven't done in a while but several of you folks have been there um to one or many of the shows but that's what it was about too is opening up your home for a like more intimate uh yet by chance like things can happen um and just some good art and music and performance but um opening up your space and welcoming that um, I feel like it makes, again, art a little more accessible. And I usually try to have something interactive there. Um, Jamina came to the one and brought her whole family. <laughs> it was amazing. 
Uh, and I still have, so I had a bunch of pipe cleaners out that you could tie on the fence and make designs with, and they're still there. Some of them have lost their flair, they're rusty, um, but they're still there and, and it makes me feel so special that that was literally your crew rolled up and went to work immediately. <laughs> um, it was really fun. But that's also a piece of it too, being able to provide a holding environment for people to engage with is also what I do as an art therapist. I mean, that's a lot of the work that I do and also just advocating for creativity and the therapeutic potentials for that. So you think when you do art therapy, do you use like the same techniques and the same um, art making um, you know, like variations or like things that you do also for your own practice or, or is it? I do everything. I mean, I use, it's really based on the, it's really person centered. So it's really based on the needs of the group or the client, um, who I'm working with. Um, but we definitely use any and every material, but maybe um, based on it being an intervention, what will be helpful? Um, do you need to kind of self-soothe and be in a more controlled um, space? And maybe you just use pencil and color pencil, or do you need to be expressive and kind of use some paint or wet clay? Mm -hmm. Or when is that maybe too regressive or triggering? So there's a lot of things that come with considering materials. Um, and I teach in materials course. Um, I teach materials in the art therapy department at Pratt and it is the best class. Mm -hmm. Literally just go through a material a week and it's a studio class you create but it's all about talking about your felt sense of that material and creating. So very different than maybe coming from art school and it's really oriented to the product. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's fun to be able to kind of talk about materials and talk about a piece outside of the classic critique, but talking about what came up for you, what thoughts were happening, sensations. Um, yeah. Jamina knows. I worked with Jamina. And you, you got to do some art therapy with me. Yes, I had the lovely experience of working with you and then becoming a really amazing friend. Um, but I, lo I love the, the gallery that you did with my family because I feel like not a lot of people get that kind of exposure. Mm -hmm. because, you know, I've learned, at least at our experience with work, that I, I just didn't even know that therapy entailed outside of like the coloring that they tell you in school about how extensive art therapy is and literally. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because the previous art therapist was just she not was well. <laughs> <laughs> she was trash. You're like, this is what art therapy is? <laughs> yes, outside of the coloring things they tell you to do or just the image that they push. I think it was a really good mm -hmm. experience to see that. And to see like interactive art, I think you you were the first time that I've ever been anywhere where you can touch or do something in addition outside of like looking and staring if you get in the movies. I think that was, I appreciate that you gave me that into my family. Cool. Oh yeah, it was so beautiful. There's pictures I think on the open house um, Instagram. It's like this beautiful trail of individuals all create like deep in the creation. <laughs> um it's it's very sweet but yeah I mean I think I'm also thinking about access um and that was also part of kind of a goal for open house is accessible programming um and access can mean so many different things um but teaching this materials course has taught me a lot too about the materials we bring to individuals, like getting to know what's their experience with materials first, not to necessarily assume that they don't have any experience with it. Like even if, like my grandmother who created so many things and sewed and that was her modality. Um, sometimes the culture of your family has a creative act or an association with a material. Um, and that that 
is what the client brings. Um, so I've recently been really into kind of checking in and kind of also that's a way to expand the idea of what making art is. Um, but that, yeah, and I'm working with my students a lot to kind of drill that in, that it is really person-centered and um, a color could mean something different to someone and a material or something could be just based on family making something. Um, and I've been talking a lot about mandalas and cultural appropriation. <laughs> um, so I give a whole spiel about that. Mm -hmm. and, and then we make mandalas. But I, <laughs> I, I think it's important to give the history and then talk about that in order to utilize it. Um, but I'm so happy, Jamina, that you got to invite your family and come and interact. Um, how does that feel? Because I know, like, I know sometimes, I mean, that one was really open. People can be really hesitant in some of my interactive pieces. And I'm like, come on, do it. Yeah. Um, or I don't know. I feel like there's like a shift in feelings, like, oh, and then kind of into it. But I'm not on that side. You know what? I think it's, number one, you're very approachable and you're super chill. So that makes a difference. I think sometimes the environments can be really chill. chill. <laughs> <It's> chill. <laughs> you're, you move quickly, but you're chill. <laughs> but you know what? I think it's just approachable, like being in a certain, you know, like just being in a backyard, being outside, having like a cookout vibe. Like I have a I'm predominantly black family. So cookout is the way we enjoy our times in the summer. And mm -hmm. all of those things are kind of really important. And like the color, it just, I think it makes it easier to be a part yeah. of something when yeah. you, you feel like you're in an element where you can kind of move around. Like if you go to like, there's nothing wrong with an art gallery, but I think it just speaks to like a younger generation when you're just able to, to be in something that looks bright and looks like free. Mm -hmm. So I think that was that experience. And when there's not like a lot of really stiff direction, it's just a little bit like, you know, kind of move how you want. I think it mm -hmm. makes it easier for them to kind of just move around. Yeah. So. So, yeah, it's nice to see that point when it when there's a flow, like when even at the community show, there was a moment where like every family, it was like, it was it did get a little wild, but they were all creating at the same time and everyone was in their own kind of flow zone. And that's like um, that kind of transitional space where you're in your own space but you're also connected with the objective world around you and it's a nice I think little balance when you can make something in front of other people. I have a question too. when you're in those type of yes. spaces how is it for you to, to navigate all the different people in the different spaces because it, it does seem like it could be like a lot to kind of like be hostess and mm -hmm. provide direction and give people education like how how do you manage that space never gonna ask someone else i just black out no um i <laughs> i'm kidding but i usually am pretty like kind of running around through it but i would say that it's so different each one's so different so if i'm thinking about community there was different like the opening there was a point where it did get really overwhelming um, because there are some times when it, what is play and what is an art piece and my work really toggles that. So I do have to tune into what I'm connected to and what I can let go of because, um, you know, somebody sat on the tree. I wasn't intending that someone would sit on it. Um, but it happens. <laughs> and if I'm offering things to the, to the public and to the community, then I feel like, um, sometimes I'm having to be really mindful or like catch myself in a sense. Um, but I try to, I mean, I think I have kind of a superpower like I have <laughs> I have ADHD and I could see everything like I could see all the stuff like at top 
that's where me and Jamina worked. I can kind of like take stock of everything that's like happening and scan it and try to kind of see what needs to be held. Um, while also kind of making sure I have, I try to have a good time when it's finally that interactive time. Um, I don't know if that answered your question. I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, thought, I thought it was a good answer. <laughs> I don't know if it answered your question, but, <laughs> but does anybody else have, have more questions? I have one more question, but maybe somebody else. I wanted to, I wanted to maybe apologize because it might have been one of my kids that were sitting on your tree um, <laughs> at Miguel's place. But I, I, but I got him. Oh, yes, but no, this is important because actually what it brought to light is that it, this is that it's not the first time that someone's like is many things have happened worse than that. <laughs> um, but it gives me an opportunity to tune into um, what I'm doing and why I'm making this work and and what I am giving out and tuning into myself and can I ask what something that's really important. I mean, the piece evolved so much through there. I think my internet went. I, I, yeah. I just wanted to ask if, if you can hear me, um, if you've ever done altars or totems or anything that were like outdoors, either in a park or, or on a sidewalk or something that maybe you like came back to or the community started to add on to or anything like that, that was not in you, inside? Um, well, I have kind of sort of, I have one piece um, in Vermont at the Marble House Project. I made a basketball hoop out of like twigs and branches. And then I um, made a net and that stayed up on a tree for a very long time until the winter came and it evolved so that was kind of able to be used it was I offered anyone to shoot anything into it but it was also really fun to see it come out of the tree and kind of look like it's a little branch but it's not um, so I got to see the metamorphosis of that go through the winter but it really stopped people being able to engage because it kind of just eroded into the tree. Um, but I haven't had many opportunities where I could keep something outside for an extended period of time. I did make a hut, an interactive kind of hut piece for um, the Renegade Craft Fair. And this was when I was outside and it was in Williamsburg, like right by the water. And so that was kind of a big altar piece that you could walk into and was outside, but it was also temporary. Um, and a lot of my work is meant to be temporary that it gets reconstructed into something else. I kind of have a sweet situation where I don't buy that many materials because I just keep reusing them. Um, so there's something to that, to this non-permanence too. It can, just, which is also similar to art therapy when you're tuning into the process and like what it was in that moment when you created it and then what that process was if it was interactive in that moment too. So that was also helpful for me when I saw the tree kind of, um, there was like a, an energy in there. And when I saw it kind of taking on different form, that's what was helpful for me to kind of be able to check in with myself too and consider um, that actually I'm going to break this tree down and it's going to become a whole bunch of different things. So um, yeah, I actually think it, it can be helpful, but it would be rad to have a space where I could keep coming back to. So if you know of one, <laughs> a, a bowl or totem somewhere ready to go. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I was just kind of thinking about like Andrew Goldsworthy, you, you know, mm -hmm. and he would like make little 
uh, temporary sculptures and things out of leaves, but then they would just kind of blow away. Mm -hmm. but, but then there are people like him that that'll do stuff that'll last longer and then nature kind of takes it and then the street or, or if it's on the street the street takes it like the um like graffiti writers or um sanitation department kind of takes over mm -hmm. or, or kids so you, you can you have to let go of it and that could be good thing depending on your in intentions as an artist mm -hmm. or it could be like nasty it could it could hurt mm -hmm. you you know yeah Definitely, especially when it comes out of the held environment and into the public space. It's a definitely a different mindset around how many individuals are going to engage with it. Um, and that's also this transitional object. Too. It's part mine and it's part not mine. Um, but when I do stuff on the street, I used to do some like hang some of my pipe cleaner tapestries in different areas like off of um, when there's those temporary construction things, um, so off of like poles and stuff, there was actually one for a very long time on 18th Street, um, close to open source. And I got to see that evolve through the seasons and it fall down from a pole and then have snow on it. Um, and that was kind of an interesting process. Lately though, I've been buying lots of googly eyes. And if you walk down Fifth Avenue, there's an array of items that have googly eyes. So it could be a nice scavenger hunt for mm -hmm. South Slope individuals. <laughs> there's, there's a whole crew, of, there's, a, there's a crew called the Googly Eye Crew. That <gasps> they stick, there's at least an Instagram account and I don't know if it's one person or a, a real crew, but they stick googly eyes on things and make- That's the kind of crew I wanna be in. That's what I, I think would work for me. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm going to look into them. But that's been really fun, too, to see what objects can be little beings and, and how it changes. I did a mailbox, and I had the two eyes, and it has its little mouth. And um, it's, it's something that brings me a lot of joy. I have a lot of objects that are, what is it called when it's an object that's kind of like a person? Anna, Anna Plum. Animatronic? Anapomorphic? No, anapomorphic. Anthropomorphic? Think and okay. Ah, I did know it. Um, yes, I have a lot of that. I also, a part of the goodie bags, hold on. These are some of my favorite things. I've lost them every time I've had them, though. And they're dope. They just look cool. Their rings. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. So, uh, can I ask you about the Google, the the, um, the project that you did with the post office? Is that still ongoing? Because that's a really cool project, also. I'm sorry, you broke up a little bit. I think it's my computer. The project, which project? The post office. Oh, I only put googly eyes on one mail, one mail box. You also, I thought, I mean, I, I thought you also did this project where um, you involved like postage, basically you have to send them package somewhere else. Uh, didn't you do a project that kind of like was related to that? Am I mixing? No, that? I didn't. It <laughs> sounds fun though. I, I, I would do it. Sorry. It something I may, I would do. It's totally. It's complicated though. I've done, I also curate a lot of shows. Oh, when you're getting mail back and forth, it but is quite I, a thing. I, I mean, I saw the goodie bags. I, th I thought that was like the project, but the, okay, so no. Oh no, I just have a whole bunch of trinkets of, that I've put. So a lot of the little items from my sculptures. Um, and I was just going to make some right now. And if anyone would like, you could pick one up or I can mail it to you, but you'll also, then you get a puppet, a hand puppet. <laughs> I would love one. I would love one. And it looks just like a frog ball, right? Or Kermit. Eh. <laughs> um, 
So who all wants a good, uh, wants a, um, a goodie bag? I want one. <laughs> okay. If you live in the neighborhood, let's coordinate after this and you can pick one up. That would be awesome. And if you don't, um, you can send me your address. Um, I can give you my email. Mm -hmm. It is Melissa, M-E-L-I-S-S-A, Diaz, D-I-A-Z, art at Gmail. Um, so send me your address and I'll send you, it will be like, you know, fresh stuff like this, but also like maybe some other pieces of sculptures and things and necklaces and such. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, I forgot about the chat. I'm literally on Zoom all day, every day. I could have just typed that in the chat. I can't. <laughs> so one more thing, what do we do for, um, for Hispanic Heritage Month? month? What, what, um, what do you suggest we could? I mean, I think, um, so one thing that's happening um, is that there's like a major uh, political crisis happening in Puerto Rico right now. Um, and I think educating yourselves on anything about Puerto Rico, it's such a misunderstood, weird commonwealth. Um, many people think it's another country. It's really the only place that's um, not a state and they can yet still get um, recruited and they can't vote. So you can get recruited to go to war, but you can't vote. Um, so it's, and there's a lot of conflicts with it becoming its own separate, um, I don't know what it would be called, um, separating and becoming independent uh, because there was a lot of corrupt governors, things are changing, um, but there's just like this really big thing happening. And on November 3rd, there is a vote for Puerto Ricans and they only get the choice of yes or no, a state or not a state. Um, so there's no room for anything in between. So, um, there's a bill coming up for a referendum. I don't, I mean, it seems this has been a battle for so, so, so long, but it seems, um, like at this point, a referendum would be tough, but AOC is on it. So she gonna do it. I think, I hope. Um, so I think that just there's, I don't know, there's just a lot of misinformation, I think, or just not information. Um, and because it's a middle ground, and I really identify with that too. I'm also someone who's um, white, but Latina, um, sometimes the only Latina person, sometimes the most white person. So ha kind of in that middle space. And I think a lot of Puerto Ricans are, and the New York Ricans and the Puerto Ricans on the island. Um, so there's a lot of kind of uh, tertiary kind of space there. Um, and there's a really good organization called Spanish Sin Pena. Um, I'm going to put in the chat because I remember the chats here. Do you put it in? Because I'm sure I would make a little spelling mistake there. <laughs> so they're a super cool organization that I just found out about. Um, and they advocate and teach Spanish lessons to um, Latinx individuals mm -hmm. because largely, and myself as well, there's a huge shaming curve. If you are shamed by your family members, by, and it really just actually kind of causes a barrier to really attempt to. I mean, I think some of my jobs have put me in a place where I, I had to because I had to communicate with the family I was working with. Um, but it, they're kind of trying to take the shame away and that your culture and heritage isn't just your language, that there's so much more to that. Um, so they're just a super cool organization. Seen fan on means without shame. Um, so they are having a drive for materials, art materials, school materials, um, donations to give to, um, I believe migrant 
children in California. They're trying to get 500 packs um, out to them to um, Mexican migrant workers' children. Are they a non for profit? Do you know that? Um, I don't know if they're a non for profit, but um, so I don't know if you could get a, um, a, I, have, I have to nominate an organization. But they, um, it's like. <laughs> Um, I don't know. They might be. They have really cool programming. Um, and only recently in the past few years has there been more about um, that it, it, kind of bringing some awareness to this shaming and kind of that there's still many other areas to your culture to take pride in. Um, yeah. Speaking of, I just got this in the mail. I'm going to show y'all real quick. I can. Mm -hmm. So I would do that. I would check out Spanish Sinfana. If you have any extra materials you want to donate, um, that's the way to do it. But and then just um, uh, and then just um, I don't know. Research like for me, I've been trying to research kind of founders in my field that are um, Latinx individuals. So, in what spaces have we just not um, heard it yet? Uh huh. Ah, yes. So, this just arrived. Can you see him? Oh, that's a what is that a? This is a this is a frog. It's supposed to be a coqui. So, a coqui is the frogs of Puerto Rico. They make the most beautiful sound. They just go coqui coqui. Um, there's actually a really cool project. Um, the Locust Project in Miami is doing um, an interactive video and soundscape. I forget the artists, and you call in and you tell them your story about your experiences with the cookie. Um, I gave them my story. It's really nice. So there's this, but it is a guido. I can't believe, and it's here just in time. <laughs> um, I've been really trying to get into Puerto Rican percussion instruments. So really just based on Titi Josie, which Jason Hoff is very familiar with her and has played many instruments in her home. So my aunt, uh, who is very proud of her heritage, has like a really nice basket of instruments that you definitely get one if she's having a party and you're, you're rolling with that. Mm -hmm. So I gotta practice them practice on my private times thank you <laughs> this is really amazing i um I, yeah thank you thank you very very much i just put our little um donate button in the link again uh if you can just give a little bit that would really help um this was amazing thank you so much for being here. So i just want to give one more um plug so I started doing the social media for my art therapy department and we every now and then have some cool stuff going on and show student work and students make videos. Um, and it's, I'm, I'm really proud of the work that they've shown. So I'm going to just put that Instagram in the chat real quick. Yeah, everybody follow also. Um, I have to do that. Actually, am I following you? <laughs> I probably. <see>. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm so bad at it. I wish it would be better. I thought. Uh, what are y'all doing with the rest of your night? Are you relaxing? Are you watching something? I could meet you outside. <laughs> Here, here's the link. Okay. Ugh, I'm so slow. Um, yeah, it's, it's nice to be able to share stuff going on in the department in this really weird year where we're half online and half not. Um, thank you all for coming and hanging out with me. I didn't mean to talk so much. Uh, I thought we, we were going to like party and hang, but I just talked. Um, and thank you, Monica, for having me. Um, 
I hope you all have a good rest of the night and take good care of yourselves and send yourselves kindness and compassion. And um, before we go though, Jason, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, I forgot they have a sound thing. Oh. Oh! I'm just so curious. You can come over here if you want. Look, they're in the same house. Bam! Oh, hi. Look at Jamina's face! <laughs> Ah, that was like a uh, trick. That was like a Zoom trick. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm putting together my old, like the ancestry photos I have, and I don't want to like touch them because they're so old, so I put gloves on. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, what's that project called? Um, I don't really have a name for this one. Y'all look up Jason Hoff on Instagram, Hoffwit, and you can see his work too um and kyle's doable guys and have and have works so we can share in that oh look at that's crazy that's that, oh, oh i could watch you going back and forth forever <laughs> um i hope you guys have a good night <laughs> thank you for hanging out with me um thank you for telling us what you were doing i, I was fascinated um yeah feel free to contact me with any questions or anything so we are probably also check out everything else we are doing at open source. We are probably going to be, I have not finalized the artist for next Tuesday, but most likely we're going to be back Tuesday at 7 p.m. Uh, there yeah, there's a super cool show up right now, the Duke Riley show. Yeah, everyone should go yeah, to that. Show. It's awesome, guys. Everyone should go. Yeah, it's really great. It's a bad artist. It's too. really great. Oh, yeah, yeah, big time. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.